how to become a luxury real estate agent. This is something that seemingly confuses a ton of people and a lot of people make it way more complicated than it needs to be. It's actually quite simple and not complex. So what I wanna do in this video is give you six specific things that you can do in order to break into the luxury market. To give you some context, within my first four months of being a licensed agent, I listed a $15 million property, which is one of the most expensive in my city's history. And after that, continued to get into the luxury space as a brand new young agent, in this city that I just moved to. So without further ado, let me dive in and show you six things you can do today in order to break into the luxury market. What's up guys, it's Mike Chair with EXP Realty. I train thousands of agents every year to scale their business the modern way and I'm doing something new going forward in order to help you crush it and dominate during this shifting market. And what that is, is anybody that subscribes to my channel, likes and comments on any of my videos that week is going to be entered into a draw in order to win a free copy of my full Social Agent Academy 2.0 showing you exactly step by step how to crush it on every social media platform and attract clients at scale like the many that are closing five to ten deals a month using these strategies so if you want to show a bit of love to my channel i'm going to show you a bit of love back and without further ado let's dive into the six things you need to do to become a luxury agent number one elevate the quality of your personal brand this is really important because luxury usually to most means quality and what you'll see is luxury clients really take into account how you present yourself which i'll get into a bit later in terms of how you dress but also it's really important to showcase the quality of work that you're doing and this goes across all of your social media platforms making sure it's consistent making sure it's not just consistent across all platforms digitally but also it's consistent with your marketing and your branding physically with your brochures your first sale signs the ads you're running the videos you're putting out you want to make sure that quality is at the forefront because you can do this on a budget when I was a new agent I was broke as hell but I was still putting out very high quality stuff investing into my business with whatever money that I had and that way people saw that I was mutually invested in the sale of the property by having some skin in the game and investing in top quality top quality photography videography real twilight photos not that box brownie crap and making sure that you really put focus on the quality of work that you're doing because how you do one thing is how you do everything and that's most people's perception so if you're doing really well on Instagram but you're kind of leaving your brand presence on LinkedIn as something that was you know done five years ago well that doesn't show quality and pride in your work so you really want to make sure that you double down on your personal brand number two very easy one tailor your content towards luxury communities in your market a lot of people think that you need to you know come from a wealthy family which I didn't or that you have to have a lot of money which I didn't or you have to know a lot of people with money which I didn't at the end of the day it's not much more difficult to get a client at a luxury price point as it is in an average price point but the problem is is that the average realtor usually based on limiting beliefs and fears and things like that they're just focusing on prospecting and putting out content related to the average communities in your market average sales price maybe it's five hundred thousand dollars well if you just go put out content tailored towards the more expensive communities in your price point maybe the average price is over a million dollars you're going to get clients over a million dollars where you put your time where you put your energy your focus and your efforts is where you're going to get clients so if you want to break into a luxury space make sure you start doing community tours in the luxury communities because as people start to search for those communities on google and youtube whether they currently live there and want to scope it out or whether they're looking at moving there and relocating from a different market if your video is properly optimized which my free training shows you how to do comment below if you would like it and that's going to allow you to rank number one and attract all those clients number three again do property tours of luxury properties if you do property tours of average price point properties you're going to attract average price point buyers and sellers if you do property tours of luxury real estate like i did you're going to attract luxury buyers and luxury sellers. So what you wanna be doing is, you're gonna see a consistent theme across here, is making sure that you're catering all of your efforts to the luxury space, because that's ultimately going to allow you to carve out a niche for yourself, and nobody's gonna ask where you came from, what your family did, how much money you have, how much experience you have, if you're the one that's putting up value-driven content for those specific areas and the quality is exceptionally high. Number four, prospecting luxury communities. This is something I did. Most people that know my story know that I door knocked three hours a day, seven days a week for the first six months as a licensed agent. I wanted to break into the luxury space. So my first three months, I was primarily door knocking communities that were around where my house was at the time. And that was very average, middle of the pack, kind of blue collar type family neighborhoods, which was average price point, five to $750,000 ish. So what that gave me the idea for is if I'm prospecting average price point communities and all my clients are average price points at that point in time, well for the next three months, 
why don't I start prospecting luxury communities? And what do you know? I started getting luxury clients because I was getting in front of homeowners by door knocking that were in million dollar properties. So this is a very effective way to break into the luxury space. Number five, go to networking events or charity events that are kind of catered towards the upper echelon, if you will. Now for me, what I did is I leveraged my passion. My passion has always been cars. I used to just have a BMW that was wrapped purple. Now I've been able to work my way to the point where I've got my purple Lamborghini. But in the beginning, when I didn't have much money, I would still go to these exotic car events. And what type of people own exotic cars? Usually people that can afford million dollar houses. There of course are exceptions, but in most cases, people that own these exotic cars like myself are making seven figures a year or more. So ultimately what I did is leverage the passion to go to these networking events where because it was a passion, you could open the dialogue with something that was mutual to both. And what I mean by that is it wasn't going to a networking event where it's a bunch of rich people and you're broke and people can tell that you're trying to get something out of them. For me, you could go up to somebody that owned a Lamborghini or Ferrari or Maserati or whatever McLaren, and you could talk to them about their car, see what they're up to. And eventually through conversation, it's obviously going to come up. Well, what do you do? And then you start to get into the conversation of being a realtor, things like that. And that opened a ton of doors for me, allowed me to get a ton of clients that were luxury clients through the car community by leveraging a passion. So if you really want to break into the luxury space, start to surround yourself with people that can afford luxury properties. And number six is a big one, which is being mindful of how you present yourself. This is especially important for younger agents. And this is what I had to deal with. If you're a younger agent, you're usually going to get judged a little more than an agent that's older because the assumption is that an older agent has more experience, which we all know is not the case. But everybody judges is not right, but it is what people do just based on human nature. So what you want to make sure is that if you are a younger agent, yeah, wear a suit. Make sure you properly present yourself. And I now wear a t-shirt because I've gotten to the point where I can, but in the beginning, I didn't leave the house without a suit. And what this allowed me to do is avoid the question of, well, how long have you been in the industry? How old are you? How much experience do you have? Things like that. Because if you present yourself well, it's never going to be a topic of conversation because people see you take pride in what you're doing. And clearly, if you're dressing well, you care about your business. Whereas I see a lot of agents fall victim and fall short to breaking into the luxury space is because you look at how they dress and they're 25 years old and they dress like they're 20. They're wearing, you know, t-shirts and jeans and or, you know, loose polos and, and slacks, things like that. They're not looking the part. And at the end of the day, you have to think unbiasedly. If somebody's 45 years old and they've worked their whole life to get a $2 million property, do you think unbiasedly that they're going to work with somebody that dresses like they don't really care about their business or that they just got into the business? Or do you think they're going to look and work with somebody and choose somebody that looks like they take pride in every single deal that they do? And this is really important because a lot of agents say, well, Mike, I know I'm going to go above and beyond every other agent in my market regardless of how I dress. Well, yes, but that's going to become a point of objection. So why subject yourself to that if you can avoid it by just dressing the part until you built them enough momentum that you can dial back it a bit if you so choose to. So those are six simple ways that I was able to break into the luxury space and hopefully that helps you. And if you have any other questions, please make sure you drop a comment below. Otherwise, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.